start getting your fabric and we're using a soft twill, a size strip, a sweatband, a pattern, and our pattern is available at properfitclothing.com, a brim, interfacing, a bias tape kit, a folder, and a sewing machine. And we're doing this all on a singer heavy duty. All the links are in the description, so go check that out. If you're using our pattern, go ahead and cut that out on the outside of the black line. Then lay your pattern on your fabric, trace around it, and cut it out. You're going to want to end up with two side panels, two top panels, and one front panel. Now take your top panels, place the right sides together, and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you sew the right edge, and this is the shorter edge. Then go ahead and trim the seam allowance. So we're going to show you two different options for adding on your bias tape, and these are just two different bias tape folders. The one on the right is just one you can get at any hobby store, and the one on the left is available at capsupplyco.com. We are going to be using the one on the left just because it's a little bit easier for us to use and we've been using it for a while. But honestly, they both do the same thing, so use whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever one you're using, line it up with your presser foot and then just tape it right on your machine. You definitely are going to want to make sure this is secure so that way nothing's moving around when you're sewing on that bias tape. And now we're going to be showing you how to set up your twin needle. And this is super simple. Just install like a normal needle, set your machine to zigzag with zero width, and thread two spools of thread the same exact way. Now all you have to do is cut your bias tape to the measurement of the folder and you're ready to start sewing. And you totally don't have to use a bias tape folder. We just find it looks way more professional. It's a lot easier than doing two separate top stitches. So place the seam in the middle of those twin needles and sew all the way through. As you can see, you end up with a nice top stitch and that raw edge on the inside is covered up. And this is fusible interfacing, so all you have to do is iron it on. So go ahead and place your wrong side onto the adhesive side of the interfacing. And we go ahead and lay some paper on that so we don't get the iron all sticky. And once you're done heating that on, go ahead and cut it out and you're good to go. And if you're looking for professional cap supplies, just visit capsupplyco.com. They have everything to make all types of caps. Now take your front panel and your top panels, place the right sides together, and sew with quarter inch seam allowance. And make sure you sew on the top edge of the front panel. It's helpful to mark this panel when you're cutting it out, so that way you don't mix up the top and bottom. And when you get that sewn, go ahead and cut that seam allowance. Now get your twin needle and bias tape folder back on and go ahead and top stitch that seam. Now we're going to be adding on the side panels and it's going to be on that curve so place the right sides together and start sewing. This part can be a little tricky because you're going on a curve. Just take your time, go slow, don't pull the fabric as you're sewing, kind of let it fall into place and just work around that curve. And you're going to want to do this for both side panels.
And once you have both side panels on, go ahead and trim the access fabric. Now go ahead and top stitch both curves. And this can be a little tricky, just go slow and work around that curve. And don't get discouraged if it kind of turns out weird the first time. It takes a few tries to really get this step down. Now we're going to make some bias tape to cover up our back arch and we're using this little kit. It's a bias tape maker. It's super handy for all sorts of sewing. I definitely recommend picking one up and the link is in the description below. So go and check that out. So grab the size you want, cut your bias tape to the measurement of that size folder, iron it, and then get ready to sew. Totally don't have to cover up the back arch this way. We just like doing this because it adds for a nice look. You can totally roll it over and hem it. This kit also comes with a presser foot guide, super handy. We're actually not gonna use it, we're just gonna put it on by hand. So now that you have your bias tape made, go ahead and grab your cap and attach it to the raw curve on the back. If you choose not to use a presser foot guide, just take your time and work around that entire curve. And there you go, your back opening is nice and professionally finished. And now we're going to be adding a size strip, and this just adds for a little more structure around the cap when you add on your sweatband. I definitely recommend these if you're trying to get that professional hat feel. Next step is making the brim. Go ahead and grab your brim, whatever brim you're using, trace around the outside and down just a little bit past. Then from there, grab your sewing machine and do a straight stitch all the way around that arch. Now go ahead and trim about a quarter inch from that seam. Yeah. 
flip the right sides out, and then start maneuvering your brim into position. Now that your brim is nice and tight into position, I recommend using a zipper foot for this and then go around and make a seam along that back edge of the brim. Pull towards the back of the brim to make that fabric nice and tight as you sew. And if you are satisfied with the look and the tightness, you can skip this next step, but we are going to be adding some stitches to the top of the brim. And we are using a guide that will be available on capsupplyco.com. It just helps with getting nice, neat stitches around. As you can see, we're doing one line at a time, adjusting it, and then doing the next, and then making sure they're nice and even. Honestly, you can use any guide for this step, something that just keeps that brim from sliding all around. Now go ahead and trim about a half an inch from the inside of that brim. Now you're going to want to mark the center front of your crown and the center of your brim. Place the right sides together and I recommend using a zipper foot for this part as well and start from the center and sew towards the outside and once you have one side done, do the same for the other side. This helps keep that brim in the center of the crown. Take your time, keep working around. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, but after a few times doing this, it becomes super easy. Now we're going to be attaching the sweatband. This step we made our own attachment and we made this out of heavier stock paper. All you have to do is make a little sleeve that your sweatband fits in there nice and snug and then go ahead and tape that onto your sewing machine. It serves as a guide so that way the sweatband doesn't slide all around while you're sewing it onto the crown. Once you have your sweatband guide into position, go ahead and roll over the edge and then just start sewing straight all the way around. And it is really that simple. You get a nice top stitch on the outside and the sweatband will be nice and attached on the inside. And we are using professional sweatbands from capsupplyco.com. These are millinery grade and very awesome for making caps. And now we're going to be adding on a plastic snap to the back for a closure. You can literally add whatever you want onto the back. Cap Supply Co. has a huge variety of different components you can add for closures. So go ahead and roll that sweatband over towards the inside and sandwich that plastic component in between and just sew that right on. And it is really just that simple and go ahead and do this for the other side. 
do recommend using a heavier weight needle for this process because you are sewing through a decent amount of material. Now lastly, we're gonna be adding air vents and we're just using standard eyelets. So go ahead and mark where you want these to be and we're just doing two per side. Go ahead and add as many as you want. As you can see, we're kind of just eyeballing it. Go ahead and measure it out if you really want to. Once you have your marks, go ahead and cut holes, put your eyelets in and press them into place. And if you don't have a press, pliers work just as good for eyelets. But if you're looking for any tools that we're using specifically, we post all the links in the description below. So go ahead and check that out. And there you have it, your five panel toddler cap is complete. And you can totally use the same process for the adult size. Just make sure you buy the adult pattern. The more you make, the better they will get. I promise you that. So definitely don't give up after one cap. And thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you think. And we're going to keep videos coming at you. So stay tuned.